Hey everybody, Steve here. We're talking about Mark chapter 3 verses 1 through 22, or correction, 1 through 21. And it starts off about the controversy of Sabbath healing. And we've seen this in the book of Matthew, and we also see it again here in Mark chapter 3, where he enters the synagogue and the Pharisees had watched him closely as to see if he, whether he would heal this man who had the withered hand on the Sabbath so they could entrap him. And then he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they kept silent. Now what's interesting is that <clears throat> Jesus has this way of cutting to the quick of things, getting right to the heart of the matter, and that instead of doing what a lot of hard-hearted uh, Pharisees, the fake Christians, uh, you know, even false teachers and cult leaders will do is that they will do everything they can to get away from the simplicity of God's word. And it's where Jesus says, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or do evil? In other words, he's having them, having these Pharisees recall God's word in the Old Testament to search the scriptures to see if these things were true and to give the answer from God's word instead of the answers that they gave which kind of hards, uh, hides the hardness of their hearts. And, but they kept silence when he looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. Now, can you imagine that the, that the priests and the Pharisees, these people that were supposed to be feeding the sheep, the flock of God, um, they're doing everything but that. You know, they're getting rich off the people. They're, they're hardness of heart. They're engaged in sin, and they're, they weigh the people down with heavy burdens. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Now this point about the Sabbath is that the Sabbath was made for man. And then we see other passages in Scripture where it talks about, you know, where, I mean, we see the example of Jesus uh, on the Sabbath day, going through the fields, and his disciples and him are eating the grains of rice, which was forbidden. You weren't even supposed to be out of your house. And what had happened is that these Pharisees had, had put on so many of their own regulations and there were so many rules of their own that there was actually a detriment to God and what he was trying to do. And they were, the hardness of their heart, that's what brought them about, uh, brought about these additional rules and regulations that, that, that did, that um, kind of, it's kind of like a dam, it dammed up what God's word and what people were supposed to do to give as they saw need. And it got to the point, and that's, and unfortunately this has carried on today where we have people who say, you know, well, if you don't celebrate the Sabbath from Friday night to Saturday night or on Saturday or on Sunday or whatever day it is, that you're not a believer. You're going to hell. Uh, you're a lawbreaker. Blase, blase, blase. Unfortunately, they don't understand that Jesus gave the parable that said, you know, hey, if you have 99 sheep and one of them goes astray, aren't you going to go and get that sheep? That was a person's job. That was a person's work. That was a, a way a person would provide for his family. So letting that, that sheep go would be taking away from that man's family. And we know that God's word says that, you know, he who doesn't provide for his family is worse than an infidel, worse than an unbeliever. So we have to understand that Jesus is our Sabbath rest because it's only through his sacrifice on the cross are we able to get forgiveness of sins and enter into that rest which is heaven. And again, the Sabbath is made for us and that we rest. The way that we rest is that we don't have to work our way to heaven, but it's through the work of Jesus Christ and by his grace that we are saved. And then it says later on, it says, uh, verse 6, when the Pharisees, then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him that they might destroy him. <clears throat> What's really interesting is that they were so hard-hearted, they, they had so much sin in their lives, and Jesus had confronted them with the truth of God's word, repent or perish. It's, it's the extreme of do you do good or do you do evil on the Sabbath? In other words, it was forcing them to look at, the, at God's word and clearly what it said. But yet they didn't want to do that uh, because they wanted to be the top dogs. They wanted to have the power, the position, the status, and everything that came with that. They wanted to be seen by men as we've heard before. But it's interesting because the Pharisees, 
plotted against him immediately, and the Herodians were, were against him, against Jesus. The Pharisees were, they were the Jews that were, hey, were for the Jews, of the Jews, for the Jews, and that's it, nobody but the Jews. The Herodians supported Rome. They were Jews that supported Rome. So here you have these two groups of people that hate Jesus, that used to hate each other. The Pharisees hated the Herodians because the Herodians um, supported Rome, and Rome was there. They were an occupation force in Israel, and they were taking taxes and money and all kinds of stuff from them. And so the Pharisees said, nope, nope, we're, you know, I mean, they're fighting back and forth, going at it. But yet when the truth of God's word hits them from Jesus Christ, they both realize, hey, we have a common enemy, and that's Jesus Christ, because he confronts us in our sin. The Pharisees had got to the point of where they ignored God and his word, and they were playing the game, and they wanted that position of power. They tried to usurp that from God and Jesus Christ, and they didn't want to give it up. They weren't being true servants. They weren't being high priests that were supposed to feed and equip the sheep. The Herodians, on the other hand, were like those who had gone the way of the world, and they didn't want to be convicted of doing what the world does, doing what Rome does. Wow. So what do we see with, how does this apply today? There are so many pastors, there's so many believers, there's so many movements of God, uh, supposedly, that are like the Pharisees that if you challenge them with the truth of God's word, with the simplicity of God's word, they will hate you just as they hated Jesus. And Jesus said, you know, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too, because if you love me. I mean, it's just going to be that way. If Jesus is in you and you're in him, you're going to walk that walk to where it's in truth, and other people are going to hate it. And of course, the people that claim to be Christians today, and yet... Uh, support the world wow yeah they're not living in holiness they're doing everything they can to make everything oh you can do whatever you want all you have to do is say that little prayer that salvation prayer your your walk you don't have to endure to the end you know like scripture says you don't have to be obedient that like jesus said if you love me you obey my commands you don't even have to do that all you have to do is call on the name of the lord but they forget the scriptures where Jesus says, those who didn't obey him, he will say, depart from me, I never do you. Because they don't know him, because they spend their time in the world supporting the world and its sinful desires. And then the Pharisees, on the other hand, that they're trying to usurp, usurp that, take that power uh, that Jesus is supposed to have, and they try to keep it for themselves. They build these churches, these synagogues, these, these movements, and it becomes a money-making machine, kind of like the Pharisees that we've seen. And it's, it's everything but the truth of God's Word. And when you start to corner them and say, hey, what is the deal? They're going to reject it because they're hard of heart. Now, there are some people that, that, that will repent from those things that once, once the truth goes out. But that's what we need to do is to walk in God's truth, and we need to preach the gospel. We need to, to come against the lies and the deceit and, the, I mean, and just point to Jesus Christ. We're the messengers. We're the servants. But when you take that position of servanthood and stewardship, and then you, you make it something about yourself— or against, or something about a different gospel or a different message, kind of like the Herodians did, where you rely on the world, and of course Satan runs the world right now, you know, that's not a good place to be. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, continue on, that Jesus picks the twelve, and then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, and they said, he is out of his mind. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that think that believers who follow Jesus Christ and have that real relationship with him are out of their minds. Because you're going against the church and you're going against the world and people don't understand that if they don't have Jesus in their heart. And they don't follow after him. They don't count the cost. Uh, they don't die to self. They don't repent, repent confess uh, their sins to God. There are some believers out there in these mega churches that don't even know that, that there is a hell because it's never preached. So anyway, uh, stay out of man's church. Stay out of the world. Stay in Jesus Christ and follow him. So anyway, that's Mark 3, 1 through 21. Take care. God bless. Peace.